Welcome back everyone. I'm Kevin Carpenter, volunteer at CPPCon, and I'm excited today because I have Phil Nash with me and we're going to catch up with him, find out about his, uh, his talks that he has, as well as he's teaching a class, which I will highly recommend. But first I'll let uh, Phil tell you a little bit about himself. Yeah, hello everyone. Well, I know that uh, many people do know me. We'll get to that. Uh, I've actually been coding for about uh, 40 years now. Uh, 30 of them people have actually been paying me for as well, so I must be doing something right. Uh, and most of those 30 years, I have been using C++. But I, I have had uh, some experience with other languages as well, like C Sharp, F Sharp, Swift, Objective-C, Python, uh, even Rust. Um, and I mentioned those because I've had some experience in other programming communities as well. And that's relevant because I've noticed particularly the .NET and Java communities seem to be uh, much more oriented around the sort of testing and agile practices than at least we were in C++. That's changing, but it's still not quite there yet either. So I've tried to bring some of that experience back to the, the C++ community as well. But along the way, one of those languages that I picked up was Objective-C. And that was around 2008, so the start of the, the iPhone store at the time, uh, now the, the iOS app store. and. Uh, I tried to um, uh, apply test-driven development, which I've been practicing at the time, uh, to the Objective-C world and discovered that was even more limited than C++. There was just one test framework, which was called OC Unit at the time, uh, which was third party. It's since been brought in by, by Apple, it's now XC Unit, but at the time it didn't really integrate with the tools very well either, it was just very painful to use. So I was thinking that there's got to be a better way. In fact, as well as Objective-C, there's a language called Objective-C++, which is just purely an interop language. You can mix the two languages. So I was thinking, maybe I can just use a C++ test framework. So I looked at the, the current state of the art, and this was just over 10 years ago. So um, Boost Test was around. Um, Google Test was just up and running as well, but that was fairly new at the time. And after evaluating those, I found that they weren't actually that much better, at least for my purposes. It was still quite painful to use. So I decided, of course, to write my own. Um, and uh, but the initial title for that was uh, Yakuts <laughs> for yet another C++ unit test system. <laughs> um, and the idea was it's written in C++, but uh, specifically with Objective-C bindings in mind using that Objective-C++ layer. So it's actually designed for Objective-C. Uh, but by, by the time I actually got up and running, I sort of moved away from doing uh, a lot of iPhone development. So I've shifted the focus back to pure C++. And um, as I said, I added a couple of extra features. Um, I've changed the name as well to the, the C++ automated test cases in headers. We now know it as catch. So that, that's where that name comes from. And the, the two main features that I put in, which really seem to uh, get attention were uh, sections, which allow you to split up test cases into uh, well, sections, but they're like test cases in their own. Right, um, and uh, using expression templates to decompose the, the expression that you, you test so that you don't have to separate out left-hand side and right-hand side, it does it for you. So you can write it in a much more natural way. It's a little thing, but people seem to really love that. Uh, but the whole focus was really about um, trying to get that, that, that simplicity that I was missing from the other uh, test frameworks that I'd used. Just get up and running easily, low ceremony. Uh, and that's what people seem to, to like. Uh, so fast forwarding a, a few years, I started presenting this at conferences. I mean, I don't have a conference talks before, but uh, specifically presenting catch. I uh, did it ACCU conference, uh, it went down quite well. So I then went to meeting C++ where less people knew me at the time. So I reached a bit more of an audience. So then I thought, right now I'm ready to take it to CPPCon. So 2015, uh, I got a, a session on catch in the program. And I thought, right, I'm gonna introduce it to the, the, the American and worldwide audience. <laughs> and I got there and it's like everybody already knew it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they seem to know me better than I did. So <laughs> that was a good thing, but it was a big surprise that uh, actually it already uh, got, got ahead of me. So that, that's the point that I knew that actually it had become quite a successful project. So um, yeah, pleased to say Catch is, is still, uh, well, still actually gaining popularity. The recent um, surveys, the uh, the, the JetBrains ecosystem survey uh, and the Meeting C++ developer survey, both catch as I think the, the third most popular test framework 
after Google test and, and Booth test. Uh, one of them may be even second, I can't remember now, maybe misrepresenting there, but certainly up there in the top three. So I'm, I'm quite quite proud about that. So yeah, so I definitely think I brought uh, the, the idea of testing into the heart of the, the C++ community. So that's why I'm doing a, a class on it this year. Sorry, Excellent. I, I keep interrupting you there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, it's funny to hear a bit more of the history because it's so the current company I work with when I started, they did not do any test driven development and we were building a new team. And when we brought in a couple developers, you know, I want to say one of them had used, uh, had, had known of the boost test framework and had used Google's. Um, and then the other one had used catch. And so, you know, we're a smaller shop. And when someone said, well, we can do a test framework with just a header file, then it was like, you know, we'd looked at the other frameworks and we're like, just in our mental capacity, it was like, oh, well, with a header file, it's gotta be easy. And that was the same year that I got lucky enough that, you know, I was going back to the conference in 2018 and you were teaching the class and I had never done the test driven development. And I have to say, you know, from my perspective, the class, the class was awesome. I mean, considering that that wasn't, you know, I've been programming for 20 plus years, but uh, test driven development was something I'd never touched before. You know, it's like, everything that we did for testing was more of the functional style. You ran data file through, you made sure you got the results you wanted. Um, and the way that you present it in the class was just, uh, if I remember right, we were uh, implementing a board game and doing it by writing the test cases first and then breaking your code. And it was, it was, uh, I found it incredible. I mean, it was pretty seamless, but it was like, when I actually did it, I was like that big aha moment. I'm like, that's why we end up doing it this way. And so, um, so yeah, about the class, why don't you tell us a bit about how you, how you, you know, the structure you go through, what the attendees will take from your class. Yeah, so um, just linking it back to, to the history I, I just gave, I, I mentioned that um, early on at least, testing and TDD wasn't such a big part of what we do in the community. Uh, I felt that one of the reasons for that was that it was simply that the, the test frameworks that we had were, were a bit too painful to set up and and use so people put it off as much as they could i thought we could make that as simple as possible people will actually do it so that's like removing some of the obstacles but then the other obstacle is that tdd itself well in concept it's really simple ridiculously simple i actually make the comment in the class that, you know i can teach the whole thing in one slide here it is uh that takes about you know five minutes and uh, then we can go home early except that that's actually not <laughs> yeah. why people struggle with it it's it's how you apply it and how you get the benefit from it that really takes the time and experience. And you said that you had this aha moment. I found that over the years, I've had a series of aha moments where I've like reached the next level of understanding. And the whole idea of this class was to try and compress all of that into this um, well, two day course. There's a one day version as well, which we're not doing this year uh, for uh, different constraints. But um, I think you, you just did the first day, didn't you, if I remember? Yeah, right. I, I only got half of it from you yeah. too. And I was still that aha moment. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's why it's called accelerated CDD, um, because of that intention to try to compress that experience. You, you still need, do need to go out and practice yourself and spend time on it to, to really um, you know, get, get to those next levels. But hopefully you know, it should guide you away from the obstacles and um, onto a, a narrower path. Uh, that's the idea. And I've heard from a few people that that's been effective. Trouble with these things is when you're in the class, it all sounds great. And then you go back to your day job with different pressures and it doesn't always stick. So, uh, you know, sometimes you do need uh, a top up. Uh, if I'm doing, mm -hmm. uh, I've done consulting before as well, where I'll go in to, to work with a company for a while and teach them some of these things. Then I'll go away and I'll come back maybe six weeks later, check in how they're getting on, give them a top up. And that, that's really particularly effective. So obviously you can't really do that so much with a, um, with a conference class. Uh, so I, I do try to pack not just the material in, but also a few tips on how you can do that yourself. Uh, so particularly in day two, we, we look a bit at, um, you know, how you can keep the momentum going. Uh, and also things beyond just unit testing and TDD. Uh, so you mentioned some other types of testing that you've done in the past. Those, those things are all still relevant. Uh, right. you know, all of these things, it's how these things fit together. Um, and, you know, if you do more of one thing, do you have to do less of another? Or how, how, do, they, how do they relate? We, we cover all that as well. So it's not just... TDD itself, but it's everything around it that, that helps you to uh, make most of it, really. Yeah, I, 
And so your point of the practice of it, it's like it was definitely when I did get back into the office, you know, there are pieces where we've been able to easily implement it, implement it. We we had a lot of legacy code. And so for the new stuff that we've written, it's been a lot easier for me to turn around and continue on. And and it is a practice. It, you know, I agree. It's one of those things that you just have to keep pressing on with. And as you do, you get better at it. Um, yeah. So outside of the class, you know, CPP cons virtual this year, and I know that you work with C++ on C. So you guys used Remo as well, right? What was that like? Uh, are you excited to see us use it in CPP con too? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, when I was first preparing for C++ on C for this year, obviously that was pre, uh, pre pandemic. So we were planning for a regular in person event. And as the news was <laughs> progressing, like day, day by day, it seemed to be completely changing. That's, I think we forget, you know, what it was like in those early days back in February, March, where it's like right. everything was turned over again the next day. And I was thinking, yeah, yeah, we should be all right by, <laughs> by June. <laughs> and then, you know, the next month it was, no, it's definitely not happening in June. Yeah. So I, I went from, no, I don't, I don't think an online conference would really work to actually we, we have a chance here to show how it can work. <laughs> So I switched focus to how can we put on the, the best online conference? Not just a, oh, well, we've got to go online. Let's just do what we can. Uh, right. I wanted to try and really re capture the, the essence of what makes uh, an in-person conference work, but also you know, embrace the, the different opportunities that an online conference uh, could have. Uh, in particular, obviously, people that couldn't necessarily go to an in-person conference, either because of uh, the, the travel or the expense, uh, they yeah. would have an opportunity to go. So actually, it's um, uh, it's, it's a bit more um, uh, diverse in that sense. So yeah. there's opportunities as well. But you know, the main thing that you miss, if you because of course most conferences now publish their talks online very shortly after the the, the conference. Um, so you know, what what do you get other than just being able to see it at the same time as other people? It's all the the bits in between, the hallway track we call it, or the right. networking, meeting old friends, making new friends. Yep talking about the session that you've just watched as a group, all of those things. You can do you can do it to some extent in chat, but it's not the same as seeing people face to face, particularly people you, you recognize. Yeah. Uh, so when I first saw uh, Remo, um, I realized that, well, actually this is the closest that we've, we've seen to recapturing that experience. I've been experimenting with one of the video conferencing services, uh, Jitsi, uh, before that for my meetup, uh, but, you know, with some, some success, but yeah, the quality wasn't that great. Uh, yeah. Whereas Remo seemed to to have a you know, decent um, stability, which you really need when you're having a yeah. face -face conversation with somebody. But it, it was that integration that really um, uh, struck me. You know, you, you could be having a conversation around a table with a group of people, and then you get a, a message that the the talk in that room is about to start, and then the display switch is to seeing the the person presenting. But you can actually still carry on a conversation with other people at your table or in the room in chat along the side. So you still get that sort of networking benefit, even while the talks are running, uh, but in a way that's less disruptive to the talk itself. So, yeah, I think it sort of really plays to both the, the strengths of the online format, but also recaptures some of the things that we've been missing in all these months uh, during, during lockdown. I'm going to be interested to see, I mean, because I've got to play with it as a volunteer and seeing how the tables are set up. And, you know, it is that virtual thing. You can literally go from a table to another table to to see the people that you haven't seen. And and just like doing the, this interview with you, you know, it's like I hadn't seen you since last year at the conference. And it's it's great to be able to see people. The video and the audio works really well. And so I am looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Um, yeah. So. In our last couple of minutes here, you're giving a, you're doing one talk this year, two talks. You want to uh, give a comment two, on them? Two talks as well, yeah. So one of them is uh, also about TDD, and that's on the Back to Basics track. So if, you, if you're doing the class, you probably don't need to do it, but you're certainly welcome <laughs> to as well. As I say, you know, we, we always appreciate those reminders and top-ups, uh, but I'm not really going to be saying anything that I'm not really saying in the class. But if you're not seeing the class, of course, you just want an intro. That's that's ideal. Um, and then the other talk is, well, I'm, I've called it OO considered harmful. Uh, and maybe, okay. I, maybe I should just leave it there. <laughs> 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 All right, but it's going to be a bit of a tour of the, the different paradigms that, that we use and, and are using in, in C++ 
uh, where they're taken to us and how we how we can play off the different strengths or weaknesses and um, not get too religious about it as well. But uh, that, that's as much as I'll say, I think. You, you need to come along to see what that's about. <laughs> Well, I'll definitely catch that talk. I will say to you know anybody watching, um, I had this experience a little bit last year with Klaus when I took his class because I took his class and he did move semantics in the class. The move semantics talk that he gave, uh, you know, because he even had a two part talk and the detail that you're able to give as an instructor in the class is night and day, at least mm -hmm. in my opinion, from what you would get, uh, you know, in the talk. So by all means, you know, I'll probably be taking your talk and, and looking at that as a refresher because I certainly won't mind. Um, but to anybody watching, you've, you're interested in test-driven development. You want to take this class. It's going to cover, in my experience, it covered everything that I needed that really got us jump-started for our company. Um, Phil, I appreciate your time this morning. And That's so... A bit of pleasure. Uh, and yeah, so I'll look forward to seeing you at a virtual table at the conference. <laughs> I shall see you there, yes. Thanks, Phil. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.